Hello again. This is the second video in the series that I've um, I'd like to put out on, on onto the internet for believers um, who, especially those who are following the end times. Um, before I actually go into each of the different um, events that will be happening in the end times. I'd just like to um, tell my viewers that there are certain principles we will adhere to um, while um, studying Revelation. Um, we'll be first of all kicking off from Revelation 6, because that's where the action starts, the end time action. At this particular point in time, they uh, Jesus has spoken to John about the church and he's also um, they figured out that the lamb is the only worthy person of opening the, the seals and chapter 6 kicks off with the, the first seal being opened and uh, this to me signifies the beginning of the end times so um, I know in the book of Daniel, it, it describes that in days what we should look forward, uh, we should look to, and some of those times they've, uh, we've miscalculated because some of those times they've come and gone. And uh, so I'm not putting too much emphasis on that, although we should probably combine that in the study, but to keep it short, we'll be keeping it just onto the book of Revelation, because that's what we're really, we're really interested in. Uh, We'll probably do Daniel afterwards, but um, some of the principles I just like to um, go over or just uh, reiterate that what what we should look to first of all, as I mentioned in my previous video, we have to pay attention to every tittle, right? Even if it's apostrophe, if it's a word, um, what it says, what the whole verse does not say. So we be paying attention to every single aspect, everything that God has thrown out there for us to dig through, all the information that is locked in a particular verse or a sentence, uh, we'll make use and we'll also remove those ideas that God that hasn't put it into the word or into the verse. Secondly, another um, principle we should adhere to is that um, the amount of real estate that God gives to a particular idea is also how important it is. So if God mentions a particular event, or let's say he mentions two events in one verse, those are not really that significant, or they, they will be there, but they're not going to be on the major scale. But in, in other instances, he to a particular event, he might add, he might uh, spend a few verses on it. Um, those are real big events. Those are what God has said. Listen, listen take it. I'm giving you detailed information about this. And because I want you to know that this is going to be a big deal. So there are different events that, 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 that occur that you have to, you should um, look at what God has spent on those verses. Um, the amount of space paper God has spent on those verses is how significant or important they would be. They're all important, but I mean, is that how um, how important they play in, in in the whole scheme of things, the time near the end. And then the, the other uh, principle we'd like to have a look at, which is going to, which is really going to mess things up for, for, for a lot of saints, is that, that um, everything happens in the sequence. Uh, you, cannot, you cannot jump from chapter 6 to chapter 15 and then back to chapter 8 and then, and then say, well, this, this, this all is a, a sequence of events. The Bible clearly describes that it's, it's first the seven, vials, the, the seven seals, then the seven trumpets, and then the seven vials. They happen in the sequence. And 
I do notice that when John has written down, he does probably take a bit of a detour about that particular uh, um, event or or, or um, um, happening uh, in either in heaven or or on earth. Uh, he goes into a bit of detail and probably kind of misses the plot a little bit, but comes back to the idea. And when he carries on, he carries on with the the next number. We and we all we all can count to seven, um, and we know that after five comes six, and before five comes four. Right. So, um, uh, so if he's speaking about the third trumpet, uh, it's uh, the we it's not the second it's not the sec, the the first vowel that will follow so these are these are groups of occurrences and they're divided into the seals the trumpets and the vials and and uh, and in that particular order the trumpets doesn't come before the seals and the vials then become for the trumpets they happen in that sequence so <clears throat> it's been it's been written in that sequence as a computer programmer, when you um, use the uh, uh, um, reserved um, word and, uh, you normally it's inclusive. So you say, before someone would say, go to the shop and buy me a, 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 a loaf of bread and a bottle of milk. Now, in those cases, you wouldn't expect the person to to uh, to go to the shop, buy the bread, come back, and then go buy the milk. That's what it means. It means do them at the same time. But when you read the book of of Revelation, <clears throat> and this is an exercise you can probably just test on your own before we even go into the study, is that um, verses are joined conjunctively with the word and so which 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 means that the two the the the, the idea that you that you're busy with right now is connected to the idea that we were speaking about before so it's a kind of a build up so a very good example of this is revelation 12 for, for example now this will really mess you up think about it everyone all christians out there Rap, uh, rapture watchers know about the, the Revelation 12 sign and that it happened in September the 23rd, um, 2017. But what they don't tell you is that for chapter 12 to have happened, chapter 11 has, has to have happened already. Right? Because chapter 12 starts with the word and. So if 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 uh, chapter eleven hasn't happened, then chapter twelve can't happen. So what did we see in Revelation twelve? We would, did we see the the, the lady um, um, in the sky as as uh, as we all expected? Well, if um, there are two problems with that particular sign is that first of all it's happened after some other significant events have happened and this is this is one of the trumpet judgments by the way so we're deep into trumpets and we don't even sure and, and at this moment in time we're not even sure if all the seals have happened so all the seals have to occur before the trumpets can start so what is John seeing in heaven? Because he clearly builds up that that um, or says that chapter twelve verse one starts with the word "and," which means it's a build up of chapter eleven. Unfortunately, it would mean that chapter twelve hasn't happened yet, and we're as Christians using that sign as a sign from God that happened. Well, your mind doesn't want to accept that. Likewise, mine didn't. It took me days to to admit maybe this was a different sign 
So maybe this was something that, who knows, even, even the devils uh, could have had some kind of fingerprints on it. And um, we don't know for sure. What we do know is that woman that is spoken about in chapter 12 has a bit of a history. And down, down the bottom end of chapter 12, the Bible carries on saying, um, carries on teaching about her and what she's, and, and what she's doing and, and what happens to her. Yet, if you look at chapter 12, or the Revelation 12 sign that we're thinking about is the Revelation 12 sign that happened in September 2017. That sign only appeared for a brief moment. With the woman, with the moon under her feet, that appeared only for a brief moment. It wasn't there for, I mean, if you, for, the, uh, for those who watched the sign like I did, in a 24-hour cycle, that happened for a few few hours um, and and uh, of, over two days and um, and it's, it's come and gone nothing has hurt you can only assume with that that it probably was an incorrect sign that we were looking at and if so the excitement still lies ahead of us. It's, it's still there, it's still imminent. So, I don't want to go too deeply into this, but also we, we're told that John saw the sign in heaven. Right? Now, he was in heaven when he saw the sign. Now, we who are down here on earth, we're not privy to what John saw. He saw the throne, he saw the he saw the Father in the throne, he saw the Lamb, he saw the angels, he saw the twelve elders, and he saw the sign. So if you're in a position where you're privy to all these signs and you can see the the woman in the heavens, well then you're in you're probably in the right place. But if you can only see the woman and nothing else, then that's a good indication you might just be in the wrong place and what you're Evidencing might be the wrong sign. So, those principles I'd like to um, um, just mention. I'm not. I've been a Christian for probably the best part of forty years. I gave my life to the Lord when I was about 20, 21, 22. and um, I've been involved in cell groups and church bands and. You know, doing the work. I've I've never I've never gone for any special training except um, I've probably been through the Bible, you know, a few times, uh, um, mostly by hearing, playing it on CDs, or and um, I've I've been through a couple of books of apocrypha. So I'm I'm not a trained pastor or. Or, or anything like that. I've, I have a very deep interest in theology and especially the end times. Um, so I'm not speaking to you from from any point of view that uh, would would belong to a denomination, and um, so I'm not trying to teach anything that that I know probably doesn't exist, or I'm trying to pull people over. I'm a rapture watcher like the rest of the Christians out there who are watching out for the coming of the Lord. I'm hoping it happens sooner than later like everyone else. I just would like to know why we have a 100% failure rate as far as predictions are concerned and what we should probably be looking out for um, rather than running to, you know, listen to what sounds this person says and that person says. I don't want to mention names, but I've 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 I've, I've watched nearly all the watchmen out there, and and I've also hung them to what they've said, and um, I've followed them. And in most cases, most cases I must admit I didn't quite agree, but um, in some cases I did. And and you know, hey, 
because they will ask you, Mark, you're not going to play games with it. If someone is calling at a particular day and um, they are indicating it, it might be the great uh, uh, rapture that we are looking for, I'm ready to go. I'm, I, I t I'm taking no chances. But on the other, in, in, on the other side of the coin, is that we, if we're told, you know, time after time, day after day, that that uh, um, this this is this is the day. This is the high watch day. This is the day to go for. How can we be certain? Because we also become weary, you know. And uh, a brother of ours who's a who's a very prominent watcher mentioned that a lot of watchers have stopped watching. And it's due to this problem that uh, nothing happens. There's, there's, these are all huge known events. They all, of course, that's a deception. All these events do mean something. It's just not in the time that we think they are. So, um, strap your, uh, strap your seat belts. This, I believe, will be a ride of your life, as it was for me, and. Um, and you will know that you will know that you will know when the rapture will be and will will, will occur. Um, as I said, it's it's any time now. And um, what happens after that really is, um, especially for those who are watching, is really ir ir irrelevant for the rest of us. Once we're raptured, we don't really care much about what happens down there, except if you have loved ones. Um, and of course, you know, you could use this information to inform them. This is what's going to happen after this, after this, after this. So, Rapture Watchers and fellow Christians out there, bear up, chin up. Jesus is coming. Jesus, Jesus will be as soon as next on the agenda. And there's nothing else left for anything to happen. As we know, we have the fig tree uh, prediction we have uh, um, we have uh, we have so many pointers and indicators to this particular time and everything is falling in place we are not here for the mark of the beast uh, um, although we will talk about it we're not going to spend too much time on it um, but uh, bear up and as as the word of God would say say declares Jesus loves us and we are not going to go through the tribulation. This world is getting a bad place to live in. We all know it. Um, you got to, you, you really got to decide what you want to watch and what you don't want to watch. Sometimes even the videos that I put out by watch, watchmen are, are, are distressing. You know, when um, you got to, you can't put your head in the ground but at the same time you can't ignore um, uh, you know, what is, we do know the world is getting bad. Uh, um, what is what is called good? Um, what is called good is called evil, and what's evil is called good. Uh, we are we're right in the middle of those times, and uh, we know that this is all predicted. This was all predicted two thousand years ago, and that is that is not a coincidence. And um, if we if we had a little bit, a little more information about where in fact God is with this whole deal, um, that would give you hope. That would give you hope because we know it's going to happen, and, um, and and how it happens because everything else has happened. I'm going to show you on the video in the next video uh, the four seals, the first four seals that were opened by the Lamb has already occurred. And because this has occurred, we can expect um, the rapture event to be happen to happen next. Okay, see you on the next video.